This meeting, this meeting has been framed in the context of the aftermath of storms in New Orleans and on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We made a very conscious decision to hold this meeting here as a signal of support and solidarity with the people who live here and used to live here and seek to return. Uh, we spent our weekend focused on redevelopment efforts and in worship. Uh, we invited our Anglican Communion visitors to join us in those efforts as well. In all that we have done in our deliberations in this house, in our work in the larger community, in our gathering with other people, we have remembered and focused on and discovered in deeper ways our interdependence. We are members of a larger communion. We are a diverse body in this church. We are members of a population in this country who are affected still by the aftermath of these storms and by patterns of racism and poverty that continue. Focus on mission is the central piece of why we are here and our response to the Anglican communion requests is also couched in that context. I'm a new bishop, and this has been my first year serving, and I have been deeply, deeply impressed by the spirit of respect uh, by which bishops who have differing views uh, have expressed and had their expressions received. I am also deeply impressed with the commitment across the House of Bishops for the continued mission of the Episcopal Church in local communities, uh, such as those who labored on this past Saturday uh, around the Gulf Coast and here in New Orleans, and the conversations about mission uh, abroad and our partnerships with other countries and other parts of the Anglican <coughs> Communion. So I am deeply impressed with the spirit uh, of common mission uh, and community in this house. I've been a member of the House of Bishops uh, four years, so I'm a relatively new member. There are three things that struck me about this meeting, especially in comparison with past ones. One is a, a quest for clarity. There has been a real effort to speak uh, cogently and clearly to the members of our own church and to our partners around the world in the Anglican Communion. I also think there's been a real concern about consensus in, in the sense that there's been an effort, um, more than I have noticed in the past, an effort to uh, be as broad as we can be so that everyone in the House is heard, has been heard, and their voices reflected in what we have uh, written and produced at this meeting. And finally, a concern for careful listening. Uh, careful in two senses. Careful in the sense that we have listened uh, uh, to others um, noticing the nuances, the emotional background, what they bring, where they come from, but also full of care for each other. Careful in terms of, of an awareness that, that we bring a variety of perspectives and experiences and that we need to value each other as gifts of God to each other and to hear that. Thank you. I've, <clears throat> I've been in the House uh, seven years now and I must say that this meeting and the work of the bishops who were present here and part of it I think re reflects one of the great moments of a community of religious leaders um, seeking to find positive and constructive ways forward that are faithful and authentic and that have integrity. I want to submit that that we in our efforts found ways to find common ground where we could for the most part nearly all stand and in finding that common ground to find high ground. We took the high ground and the high road and we believe that that leads us forward as a church seeking to do God's work in this world. And that happened at this meeting. Two things in particular uh, I'll take from this meeting. 
One is the opportunity to go to uh, the Diocese of Mississippi on Saturday and to uh, work uh, and learn more about the work that's of recovery that's underway there. Um, so many of our uh, folks in the Episcopal Church have sent money and people to, to help in the recovery effort and to be able to visit finally firsthand and to participate. It's been a, a, a joy and a blessing for me and a continuing eye-opening uh, experience. The other is the opportunity to have that, the conversations we've had with members of the Joint Standing Committee of the uh, Anglican Consultative Council and the Primates uh, to be in that kind of uh, personal uh, dialogue uh, has been uh, most helpful in moving us forward in the kind of uh, spirit that other colleagues have spoken about. I'm going to talk a bit about the senses of the human function. That's taste, smell, touch, and so on, and say that all of those senses were deeply engaged for all of us. My fingers are not going to forget the feeling of a heavy piece of sheetrock going up on the inside wall of houses where my spouse and I work together to try and begin for one particular house the rebuilding process. It was a joy to have the homeowner on the premises in her FEMA trailer talking to us and expressing tearfully her gratitude for our support. Uh, listening, the ear was delighted by the event we had at the Morial Conference, our convention center, where we heard Irvin Mayfield play a very special trumpet, and we learned about what the second wave is, and we got some of us up and started moving in response to the wonderful music we were hearing, learning about that second wave uh, tradition in New Orleans. Of course, the cuisine here is wonderful, and we've enjoyed eating and sharing meals with one another. Particularly advantageous has been the presence of our spouses. And finally, I want to just add a homey touch and say the warm embrace of the prayer shawls that were given to us by people all around the church uh, are essentially reminders to us that we are not operating in a vacuum, but rather as a part of a deeply connected network of believers who are part of the body of Christ and I believe the prayers represented by those shawls were part of what made the great difference that made this an exceptionally charitable and fruitful meeting. Yes, <clears throat> I've been a member of this house for over 13 years and I've watched us steadily progress to being able to come to a common mind and to speak respectfully for one another and this meeting was by far um, the most advanced meeting as far as respect for one another and, and compromise and understanding. I, am, I uh, am very impressed with the work that we did in terms of the response to questions and concerns raised by our Anglican Communion partners. I think that um, this document that we passed this afternoon uh, shows how important inclusion in the Anglican Communion is uh, for all parts of the Episcopal Church and how much we deeply respect the Anglican Communion and I also think it reflects the integrity of the Episcopal Church. Coming from uh, a state, the only state that has marriage equality uh, in the United States, um, I'm especially pleased for our gay and lesbian brothers and sisters in the church that we included the statement by the primates uh, when they said that if there were personal uh, pastoral reasons uh, for the blessing of same-sex unions, that that was something that was understood. Um, that really is, is helpful to dioceses like, like my own. <clears throat> 